Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Now this is a case where there's lots of things you can talk about uh, and only what's prohibited are the things you can't talk about. You don't need special permission to talk about certain kinds of things. Right off the top, obscene or indecent speech. Um, now this is taken to mean swear words, even mild swear words. Okay, if you listen to amateur radio conversations, generally you will find that it's G-rated um, and you don't have a problem. Now, where this runs into a problem, sometimes on nets, particularly on 80 meters, you will get people who know each other very well and they can get very obscene. What they're doing is illegal. It's just easier for me to change to a different frequency. Uh, also illegal is any sort of false or deceptive call. For example, using someone else's call sign without their permission. That is deceptive. You're lying and that is prohibited. You can get yourself in trouble with that. Now if you really want to get yourself in trouble, then send a false distress call. Because the emergency authorities respond to every distress call until they find out that there's not really a problem. A false distress call can land you in jail. That is not something that you ever, ever do. Now, on the other hand, certainly if you're in real distress, uh, you certainly can put that uh, uh, call out there on your own behalf or on someone else's uh, behalf. Now, I might warn you that a true SOS or using voice mayday uh, is rarely used. Usually somebody will say that they've got a problem in aviation. It's called pan. It's the word pan, pan, pan. Uh, they've got a problem. It's not life or death. Uh, so what you'll try to do is use the normal means of getting through to the emergency services people um, and then only if nothing else works, mayday, mayday, and anyone uh, can answer, in fact, from any radio service. Another thing that's prohibited is business communications uh, on behalf of any business, yours or anybody else's. For example, calling up somebody over the auto patch to change uh, the time of a business appointment, not permitted. The reason it's not permitted is really simple. There are other radio services designed for businesses. Businesses should use those and not amateur radio. There's ample opportunity for them to do things. Another thing that you cannot do is encrypt your communications. Uh, now sometimes if you're using a seldom used mode it might seem like that but these days you've got products like uh, um, Ham Radio Deluxe and so on that can demodulate just about any mode uh, but there's to be no encryption and the reason is if it's something that should be encrypted you should be using a different radio service or some other mechanism for transmitting your encrypted conversation not amateur radio that's not what amateur radio is built for there also is to be no broadcasting broadcasting means you talk and many people listen and they don't talk back to you you just talk it's like a radio station and like broadcast radio stations, they've got their own bands, their own requirements, their own everything. If you want to broadcast, to go on one of those, but not on amateur radio. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. And this can be done if, for example, this is part of a club. At a certain time, you might get on, for example, and say QST, which is means for everybody, okay, um, it's uh, 7 p.m. and I'm here to give you the sunspot numbers. Something like that. If, if uh, that's the case, there are special rules on that. Now, normally hams can only talk to hams. 
There are, however, special times when hams and non-hams can talk to each other. The uh, military affiliate radio service, Mars, uh, does this about once a year. They will transmit on uh, their military frequencies. We will transmit on our ham frequencies where they're listening. And this is legal for like that one day. And it's usually just sending test messages and things like that back and forth to show that you can work cross-band. Because in a true emergency, a Mayday type of an emergency, all the rules are off. You can do whatever you need to do to protect uh, life or property that is in imminent, and by imminent I mean right now, imminent danger. And so you might look for those events when they come up and participate in them. It will require equipment that can transmit on a ham band and receive on a non-ham band. And the person on the other end is doing the opposite. They're receiving on the ham band and transmitting on their own. You can look for those. They're listed in QST when those things happen. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual, and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.